this news is right now. Do you think that Leandra English should go to the CFPB tomorrow and go sit in your office and act as the acting director of the agency, um, as Mick Mulvaney did today, um, or should she stay away? So what I would say is, I think that the law, and I heard Senator Warren discussing it, I thought was it just right. The law is clear here. It says that the director, that was me on Friday, uh, shall appoint a, a deputy director. I did that. It then says very clearly and simply that if the deputy director uh, is, there's an absence or unavailability of the director, the deputy director becomes the acting director. That's what uh, Ms. English has, has now done. Uh, and. This is the kind of uh, disagreement that involves two different laws. They conflict with one another. The right place to hash that out is in the courts, which is where it is right now. It shouldn't be decided by name calling and tweets and insults. It should be decided by uh, people presenting their arguments and a judge thinking it over. This judge obviously is looking at it overnight, so recognize that it's a serious issue. Uh, and it will ultimately be resolved. If the trial court's decision is something one party or another disagrees with, it'll go to the Court of Appeals, and, and the Court of Appeals will decide it. But that's a very orderly process that's appropriate. That is an orderly process that you just described. It's not what's happening, though, simply because the White House pick, uh, the budget director, Mr. Mulvaney, uh, has showed up. And uh, he made a big show out of bringing everybody donuts, and he held a press availability and announced a uh, hiring freeze and a, essentially an activity freeze for the agency. And he started talking about uh, Ms. English, saying, well, she didn't show up today, and in, uh, in regular business life, that would mean that you wouldn't have a job when you came back the next day. I mean, the, the White House is um, not pursuing this in, the, in, in an orderly in, in the kind of orderly fashion that you just described. And so does that change the calculus, at least as, as far as you're concerned, in terms of how to fight for this position? So I can't speak to or read the minds of the people at the White House, uh, but essentially, as I said, I think the law is pretty clear on this. It says that the deputy director shall act as the director until a nominee is presented to the Senate and confirmed. And you, you'll remember, Rachel, I went through that process. In my case, I was held up for almost two years, but ultimately was confirmed by 66 votes. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's an orderly process. People get a chance to vet that nominee. They get a chance to hear the views and really weigh and consider it. Uh, this is a very fast process. And the statute provided for the fast process to be handled by having the deputy director step right in and be there until the president nominates and, com and gets somebody confirmed. That will happen here eventually, but it doesn't help us uh, right now. Do you have any, um, any uh, regret? Do you have any regret about, um, about leaving, about your decision to leave the agency, um, given that this is what has happened in the wake of your departure, and we are having uh, not just this very unusual fight, but a lot of chaos and an incredibly aggressive move by the White House to put somebody in there who's been made no bones about the fact that he really doesn't want the agency to exist. Uh, does the fact that this is what's followed in the wake of your decision make you regret your decision at all? No, I don't, because that's simply a matter of timing. It was very clear my term runs out uh, in, in the part of next year. Uh, it was a few more months I could have stayed at the agency, but the same issue would have arisen then. The Trump administration ultimately will be able to present a nominee, and the Senate will either confirm them or, or uh, not confirm them, in which case that process will go on. So that was, that was just a matter of timing. Uh, I stayed this year and fought being fired. Uh, you'll remember, Rachel, for months uh, I went into the office in the morning. A lot of people talked about me being fired. I didn't know if that might happen by the evening. I stayed there because there was important work to do on consumer protection. We worked on that arbitration rule. You know that fight. Went to a 50-50 vote in the Senate. And we worked on a payday lending rule that I think is a very important rule that is now in place. Uh, what happens in the future? You know, it's hard to say. My hope and expectation is that consumer will be here 50 years from now, 100 years from now, doing the same work that we set it up to do. It's good work. It's important work for people and families all over this country who need somebody standing on their side, making sure they're treated fairly. 
giving them a voice when they do get mistreated or cheated, uh, that they can have a problem that they can bring to the Bureau and get it fixed. I think that's very important work, and I would be very surprised to see the Trump administration uh, making a conscious decision to undo consumer protections for people that they want, that they need, and that they deserve. Richard Cordray, uh, the immediate former director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the only director um, that agency has ever had. Uh, the agency now just in a very strange situation uh, with this standoff between dueling maybe directors. Uh, Mr. Cordray, thank you very much for your, your service in government. Um, I know you've been uh, through some really acrimonious times, and uh, please stay in touch as you make your, your future decisions, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank right. you, Rachel. Uh, we've got some big news um, from another